Good day, viewers, and welcome to another episode of Theatre Writing. I am Helen Madu, and my colleague. On today's episode, we will be discussing on the topic entitled Information Technology to Journalism. In the house with us today, we have our wonderful guest, a man of great prestige and a wonderful personality. He goes by the name Mr. Simeon Ajimobi. He's an IT led instructor and a technical expert. He works at New Horizons Computer Learning Institute. So, Mr. Simeon Ajimobi, thank you so much for honoring our invitation. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Yes, sir. So, Mr. Simeon Ajimobi, we would like to ask you a few questions. What's so what do you think, or how do I put it, how has information technology helped the journalism, both broadcast and print? Okay, thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm Sister Taiwo, the message. Thank you so much for the opportunity to give to me, to be able to bring out um, the kind of the breaks, the kind of the mixture, and the kind of the way IT has been able to help um, print and journalism. Uh, broadcast, journalism, and everything. Actually, yes, there is a synergy between the two, and it has actually really helped it to go really far. Um, when we look at it, definitely, certainly there's a lot of advantages that IT has really helped journalism in entirety, in its totality. But I would like to break it down little by little with its points. Like, um, I want to highlight some points from the print uh, aspects of journalism, and I would also like to highlight some points uh, for the broadcast section. I, I will talk about the points, but I will not elaborate everything. But I will just have to mention that number one, other print, how has IT been able to influence journalism in the print section? Is that definitely it has been able to help the print journalism. You know, print definitely is paper based. Yes. That is the IT we call it the hard copy. And we also have the soft copy. So it has been able to allow whatever information that is on the hard copy give those information what we call the online presence. Do you get that now? Now, from online presence, we are talking about wider range. Are you getting that? From wider range, we are talking about further locations. And from further locations, we are talking about a lot of people accessing information at a particular time. IT has been able to help in that way. So, it has been able to give enhancement to information going from paper based to an online presence. Same information. Different, diverse sects of people, location, and everything. Now, also, we have the one other print journalism. What I has been able to do again, we have what we call the instant update. Do you know the process it takes from gathering of information to the processing of information to the editing of the information in broadcasting to now the printing? Before the dissemination to the consumers, those are the readers. Give you the distance it takes. It takes a lot of days sometimes to process. But with the advent of IT now, there's something we call instant. It stands up there. So IT has been able to tell whatever you need to print, even before it comes out in hard copy, it's already updated. So on that print also, we have something we call data. Visualization. IT has been able to give what we call data visualization in such a way that when we talk about, according to social reports, social number of people have been able to do this according to me, June, July, August. How are we going to get the chart? IT softwares. Yeah. The IT analytical softwares has been able to give what we call visualization of data. In aspect of when it comes to numbers or statistical values. So, if I begin to give you very huge numbers now, like the budget of Nigeria and the particular year regime, this and that, you may not be able to visualize, just know this is larger, this is bigger. 
We will not put forth an actual digital visualization of data because of IT software integrated into print journalism. So, does it mean that without the IT personality or the IT, the information technology, there will be other means of actually keeping data? No, it's not actually keeping data, but visualizing how a particular data is. Now, let me give you a very layman um, explanation to that. When print journalism was actually in running, um, you know, we talk about visualizing everything. Data are visualized in numbers and figures. For example, population, 1991. 2001. I guess like that. It will be in figures. In 2001, we have 60,000 of people in Lagos. But with IT software, data like Tableau, this print journalism has been able to bring them a pictographic representation of those values. In bars or in pie charts, histograms and everything so that we need to help in seeing data and analyzing those figures to a representable and digestible uh, uh, orientations. They also we have what we call the global reach. Like I mentioned earlier, we be able to then there is what we IT has been able to help in getting the information in, in whatever you printed or the data you printed out into the global form. We use the help of internet. So it is the advent of internet that gave us what we call the Google reach. Because initially, internet actually means the interconnectivity of millions of networks. And we all know that the node, how my times are not taking the node means the end users, the receivers, the clients at the end of everything are human beings, are readers, individuals. These are the nodes. So when you bring Multiple networks, multiple people connected together. That's the internet. So you'll be able to disseminate this information to multiple people at the same time. So when I want to come down, that is for when I want to come to the level of broadcast also. I love the very first aspect I want to talk about. That is the live broadcasting. IT has been able to help in what we call the live broadcasting. Truly, uh, when we make use of the analog form of broadcasting, uh, we will be having this kind of record and present, which it has to go through a lot of uh, uh, editings and a lot of scrutinies and everything. But with this one, we don't need to edit anything. As it's happening live, we are giving a plan. Like there's a news as such of that, the first one you call it, I would say, I am here having the Kenya Catholic bomb blast, and it's the way it is, and everything. And we hear the rumble, and everything. Why? And there was another one, they were talking about the BRT issue uh, on the railway line. Yeah. It was there, right? You were saying, you were dragging out people, taking people to the emergency center. Why broadcast? You don't need to, ed- you don't need to edit. It's, it's a semi auto uh, form of editing which I tell you to give software that remove noise, remove distortion and remove distractions and give a perfect uh, broadcast video live in with no stress at all. I get that. So we have what we call multimedia storytelling. You see now that many people will be right. But they can't speak. say. Many people will want to say, but due to facial defects yes. and some other things, or uh, let me say, maybe uh, one drop and function, they will not be able to give out this information. So, what they do is to use digital storytelling, which simply means usage of a caricature mm-hmm. developed by software that looks like you. That when I look at it, there's no way resemblance to you. Your voice or another person's voice, AI's voice. We say the same concept, the same concept of what you wrote, the content, 
we story telling out with what we call animations. And that will give out the story, the information they're trying to pass out. Do you know where that digital storytelling was used the most during COVID-19? It was used so much to disseminate information to people. Trying to advert, advert. Advert. Yeah. I just want to mention that advert is pure digital storytelling. You call it advert in your, your, your professional jargons. So we, in our professional terms, it is digital multimedia storytelling. That is what it actually means. So I tell you, we use web broadcasting in such way, and we now have digital story, uh, digital and uh, news platforms. When you are driving, you have access to traffic updates from channels, and your team is not in your car. So what is going on? Ordinary app development. So an app development has been able to bring digital news platforms to life, and so on and so forth. And we have a lot of more things like user-generated content now. You see ways you want to give out ideas, you don't know how to disseminate it. I tell you, able to give out some social media platforms that are purely worth free of charge. And I, I can give permit to mention me. I, I heard of this Papoko doctor talk about taking of water. He didn't do anything. He didn't spend any amount. Within just 30 seconds of video, I think in few minutes, he had 16 million views. Just take water. water. So digital platforms, if not for the advent of IT, that have been able to bring up all that social media platform, how can a people doctor be able to give out drink water? <laughs> and you can see that now. In that wide range of people for free for nothing so that is what we call it and we have audience interaction now feedbacks from audience when you drop an information somebody can tell you i was there when this thing happened this is a false information how can we say that do you need to go back if it's from MITV and they broadcasted something false the person has to take back down to the place and you know the cost of food yeah. now that they go along them and eventually we may not be able to know that such applications occur. Yeah. But on digital platforms and digital feedback, you can read people's comments. Now let me tell you one secret of me making decisions online. People's comments. Even up on Play Store, before I download it, I look at the comments of people and say, don't waste your time to download it. I don't waste my time. I go ahead. So that's what we call digital feedbacks. Kind of need to incorporate that into broadcasting. So you don't just tell us what you have for us, and some eyewitness will tell you this is true. This is true, and you can give some comments about it. Do you get that now? So we have more and more and more and more like online demand viewing. I I, I can ask. For what content I want you to get back to me by next week. Like, you know about top 10 charts. Top 10 charts. Top, like I said, she please we request. There was no request before that event of IT. It was only the concept of the presenter. Sometimes the presenter runs out of ideas. But because of IT, people could be an overflowing request. In fact, let me do what avalanche of requests now because of the digital so we have the visual presentation has been enhanced and so on and so forth that is how i tell you to help in the broadcasting section influencing it to be more stronger and even much more influential in our in our time of now all right sir you said so much and another thing i want to ask you said you actually talked about the importance, the, the way um, it has actually improved the media. How about the negative side, the damage that also caused to the media as well? Okay, thank you so very much about this. I love this question specifically. 
Because uh, apart from being an IT tech expert, I, I think um, I myself, my way of life is a beneficial philosopher. So being a philosopher, my own school of thought is that to every positive side, there's always a negative side. Even married. <laughs> Even married. Even religion to everything. So for everything that has advantage, there's always a disadvantage. I would shock you that even though you don't ask what is disadvantage, I will tell you there's something missing. It's also a disadvantage. But the only advantage of the advantage of IT in, uh, in journalism, especially print and broadcast, is because the advantages are more than disadvantages. And IT, to me, I'm thinking that IT is the only one that is able to give out errors and can use that same IT to correct the errors. Now let's go straight down to your question. What are the uh, uh, what you call it? disadvantages, misbenefits, or, or what are the negativity that has happened to um, I, to journalism through IT, despite the support and influence. Number one, spread of misinformation. Do you agree with me? Information has been able to spread so fast even before we can catch up with the originality. The time I was watching um, some videos of our ex president, and before you knew it, not knew that it was dirty. And you think it's released. Everything was going exactly so few weeks ago. I heard this channel presenter. I have to show a live disclaimer that there's a video going on YouTube that it was sponsoring a Ponzi. Mm. And he has to be like, I'm not the one. Right. And how come they get his voice? Everything. Everything. AI. I don't want to go too deep in that. Misinformation. But give me a lot of people have entered into that particular Ponzi thinking it's right. If IT was not in existence, and many people don't read newspaper. <laughs> Many people don't get what they go when they are actually sharing these news. There's no light, there's no power. You will not be able to get yeah. this information. And let me tell you one thing. Before I make mention in the process of uh, broadcasting, the so called processing. So, before the advent of total incorporation of IT into broadcasting, there was this time taken to do a proper scrutiny. Of information, but now we don't. I think it's zero or no now. We don't any longer. Once we get it, we pick it up. We said, we said, people, some people have started giving themselves some names at Apple.com. <laughs> Meaning that whatever you read from my blog <laughs> is either not true, there's another one like that was the blog that this is not the news. I don't even know about that one. There's one, there's one group that this is not the news, but they say it's so serious. I said it is the news. Yeah. So we have a lot of them. We have this uh, is something something left gist dot com. Gist. He said something gist. He will tell you this is for no gist. Or whatever gist. So misinformation has been able to spread so fast. And everything. Now I'll mention one again. We have what we call fragmented audience. Because we all know that as we are um, in this broadcasting uh, case may be, we have different bodies that gives out information and news. Understand? So definitely, if a platform or a particular kind of company drops a news, and we have their followers, because to me, I don't follow two stations, one. Yeah. So once I follow this and I heard that, this is what is happening right now. I might come back to meet you following your own, and you tell me this is the recent one, and we have a, a, a kind of a different alternative information from different platform. So it becomes a fragmented audience. Do you get that? No oneness of content any longer. Um, there is a word in my life that says a, 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 a report from afar. If it is not reduced by some content, 
is either added or exaggerated is the ways. So when you see these people dropping some leaves all over, definitely we have fragmented audience. So we have information overload. Imagine you are having, I, I would like to ask you, how many digital news app do you have on your phone that gives you some broadcast that you get like for news? Just one. Okay. Go and buy a new phone now. Go and look at how many. Opera news comes with it. Yeah. GG comes with it. Evil yeah. news comes with it. Phonics is not a news. Phonics is not a news. Phonics is not a news. You, you see news. Is there a system? I don't have all these five on my phone. And they are overloading with the information. I don't even know which one is right now. So I'm not talking about all this now. I'm talking about me. A simple news has given me information overload. Different app. Different organization which are liable to license to broadcast giving different information, even to this recent foil issue. I don't know which is which, I'm confused, and I don't even know where to make research to. I've been confused. So, because of the information overload, so we have a lot of things, and we have one important thing that is make mention of. Ethical challenges, copyrights. Where somebody draw a concept, a content written by somebody yes. else who is about to draw that, and that will drop and say, This is mine, without giving credit. Yeah. What about the hacking of information? You know, just go to some information, just hack it, replace it to another one. Okay, in cyber security, there are some we call it activists. The activists and the people they have they focus on political matters. They act news websites, broadcast websites, and post wrong news about it. So sorry, Mr. Sorry for cutting you short. Concerning this hacking of it, is there no way that it actually puts a stop to it? That's why I said initially from the beginning that IT problems are also solved by IT approaches. So that is there's a way you can stop it, but you cannot but have one boat among the sheep. So definitely that is why security cause awareness study is going on every day. There is infringement into original content, which is making any infringement or distortion to content has made their content invalid. And this thing is happening on a daily basis. Which is leading me to my next one. Now, every broadcast media corporation needs to now pay every money to secure their contents. So, before the advent of IT, when we begin to put things online, there was no backups. There was no black hat uh, destroyers. Contents were secure, and there was no need for extra cost of security. But now, if you have a website, I can build a very good website for you at 300,000 naira, and you keep updating, it looks like Netflix. But you have to secure it for more than two million. <laughs> if you don't secure it, you notice that your contents are distorted. You don't know how it's going to pass, and that might destroy your reputation. You, they might post a wrong piece on your beer. So you need to pay more money. So one of the advantages is you finding much more money to guide your contents. Do more things for your works. Just security risk, is what I'll call it. So to get the security risk that it entails all this kind of thing. Now, what about internet? What is internet talking about now? I'm sure this video we are doing right now live is going on the internet. Do you know how much it will cost you to put this video on the internet? Compared to how much it will cost you to show this video on the TV station, which is, has already been set up, almost nothing to zero maintenance fee, apart from the normal phone and never bills. But internet is required, not just once, not just twice. Constantly staying up all night. I remember as a personal person, I can exhaust close to 37,000 
to 60,000 like when you're journey to that amount. Just with my personal work, what's the of you people working with multimedia large contents? So these are the things that are actually very, very bad that is coming from ICT. So that's all I can say regarding that. Okay, sir, what is your what's your recommendation to based on the question you asked? What's your recommendation can you give? Okay, um, my recommendation is that according to the way ICT has been this uh, what we call um, broadcasting or let me use the general word journalism in the entire because we have branches there. So we might limit this interview to print and broadcast it like well, we have other view, even theater and every other view, and even cinematography and other things. I would advise we should embrace what I call um, reasonable IT usage. We should be reasonable and moderate in everything we need to do. Embrace more of security and do more proper scrutiny of your content before you upload it and you are going to do it. Just to be reasonable in your account. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, we've come to the end of the program. My name is uh, Washington Batayo, my colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Simo, our special guest. You're welcome. And then uh, we sincerely appreciate your invitation, knowing our invitation. Thank you. Thank you for that. Oh, we had it because from you. Okay. Thank you, girls, for you know, taking your time to watch this program on uh, journalism, you know, how the internet has been able to help journalism both create and broadcast. And we've heard all from Mr. Simon at the moment.